daemon set okay so daemon set is something uh when you bring up a service or a pod you want this pod to be running on all the nodes which are connected to the cluster right so this is what this daemon set is all about where we are going to say when i define a particular pod as a daemon set this will ensure that this is running on all the nodes of the cluster a typical example will be your network provider uh, pods like whenever the a new node is added i want the cube serial proxy to be running which is responsible for the communication uh, which is going out and in of the uh, cluster and also at the same time i want to have the network provider pod like in our example we are using calico the calico pod should be running on the node so that it will be able to communicate with each other okay and another typical example will be your log collector pod for kubernetes i told we use a efk component for log monitoring so we told that in microservice the best practice is to write the logs to the standard output of the standard input and stand uh, sorry standard output and the standard error okay yeah so uh, we know that in a container world every container will store the logs into the location where lib docker container inside that you will have a log file okay so i need to have a pod which will be getting the information from the particular log okay of all the containers okay i need to if i see that then i should be able to get the con uh, complete container logs okay this is where the efk comes into picture efk has three components one is elastic search one is frontend and one is kibana okay here we are going to talk about only the frontend which is going to collect the logs and push it to the centralized like elastic search we are not going to install elastic search and kibana here so we are just going to talk about how i can deploy the frontend pod as a uh, daemon set in the cluster and then we will increase and decrease the number of the nodes and we will see that the respective pods are increasing and decreasing automatically so that's what we are going to do so for that let's first create a yaml which will deploy the frontend as a contain uh, pod uh, as a daemon set okay so prior to that let me just connect to the one of the node and show you the log location so this is i am connected to one of the node so we go so we go to the lib docker containers folder for every container i will see a folder here so if i do a docker ps so this many containers are running for every container i see a folder here if i go to this particular folder i would see a file which is called as dot log so if i read the content of the log which is similar to my container log okay so this is the container log if i start collecting these logs it is equivalent to collecting the logs of every container okay so that this is what the frontend is going to do so let me open a new command prompt going to batch one training and daemon set dot yaml okay so the api version for daemon set is app slash v1 and kind is set this f5 u and d and let me use labels app name is f5 u and d and 
specs for the daemon set selector template Yes, friend. This is where I'm matching the template with the label and X for the template is containers and of the container is let me call it as referred to. Mage, let me use the front end from a user called Montek. And I'm going to do a volume mount here. So basically, from the underlying host mission, I'm going to mount the log directory. The FlinnD container is configured to automatically fetch the data from the mounted directory and push to Elasticsearch. Here, I don't, I'm not going to give you an Elasticsearch, but just to show you how the daemon set will be configured. So let's do two mounts. So volume mounts, volume mounts, and I'm going to create two mount directory. That means, so normally system logs will be stored under var log. Let me call it as var log itself. And mount path is path is slash var slash log. And next is the mount path that it called us where then docker containers okay. as where like docker containers and mount path is slash where slash lib slash docker slash Yes. and I can specify whether it should be a read only or not. So let me say it as a read only. only. True. Then next is my volumes. Then I will containers. Okay. Volume here. So volumes. Here, I'm going to provide the name of the mount path. The name of the mount path is var log. And it should mount from the host machine. So till now, we have seen about um, empty directory and all those stuff. Like that, there is something called host path. It will mount the container from the respective path. So the option is host path. So this will mount the directory from the underlying host machine. And then it will put that host path. And path is slash var slash log. And other is hyphen. Parallel containers and 
here also I'm going to use the host path path and path is slash var slash lib slash docker slash containers okay so this is my daemon set yaml where i'm going to define a daemon set okay and i'm going to bring up the container with the front end image there i'm attaching the host mission directory to the container okay so let me save this let me apply kubectl daemon set dot yaml Seventeen. What is the issue? Oh, sorry. From India, I have extra colon. <clears throat> Set yes should be capital. Yes, so the demon set is created. So here, if you see, there is one demon set created, and it's the number of pods. There are two number of pods available. Okay, because I have two nodes, so this is going to run on the two nodes. So I'm seeing it. So let's do one thing. Let's go to our Amazon. There, we will increase the number of pods. Okay, I told you when explaining the architecture. Okay, so the po the pods are in an auto scaling group. Okay, so uh, the nodes which are connected to the cluster are in an auto scale. Group, so I can modify the existing auto scaling group, and I can increase the number of servers. So if you see that there is one master, one based on host, and two nodes are available. Let us do one thing. On the left hand side, if you go to the auto scaling group, you can see one auto scaling group with your trainer ID or trainee ID. Okay, so I'm using batch one here. Click on that. Once you click on that, you will get an option to edit it. On the top, you will be see option to edit it. Click on edit. And it is going to talk about what is the desired capacity. So the desired capacity is two. Let's increase it to three. And click on update. So this is going to increase the number of nodes from two it will change it to three we'll see that where that i will have once again show it so in the desired capacity change this to three previously it will be two change it to three and once you come back to the dashboard you can see there will be one more node added to the cluster it is still in the initializing stage. Let's give it some time. And once it is completed, when you run the CPL get nodes, you should see the mission added here. Let's wait and see. Okay, so if you see this. I have added one more node to the cluster. Okay. And if I go to my pods, I can see three front pods coming up right now. Previously, it was only two. And also, if you go to the daemon set now, it will say it is three out of three. So, whenever a node is added to the cluster, 
human release will automatically run the fullend D and it will start collecting the data. This is the use of the fullend D. So instead of three, let me just change it back to two. And update this. So now one node should go in to the terminated state. That is, it will be removed. And I should see the demon set is going away. You can see one node is gone. Actually, it is going to the shutting down state. And if I come back and give the quick signal with nodes. Still going down. Sometime. Terminator. You see, one of the pod is going down. It is going to bring down that automatically. Just two out of two and in pods there is only two. Check the nodes, it will be only three nodes now. 